Hello friends, greetings, salutations, and welcome to Storytime with Teacher Julian. Today's book, it's an interesting read. It is called When the Monkeys Came Back. Look at all these monkeys. Can you count how many monkeys? How many do you see? Let's count. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks like part of a monkey. Eight. I think that's about it, right? I think I see eight monkeys. Let me know if you see more than that. Anyway, today's book, When the Monkeys Came Back, by Christine L. Franklin, and illustrated by Robert Roth. Like I said, it's an interesting read. Um, when it says, when the monkeys came back, I, it makes me think, well, where did they go? You know? Why did they go away? And, and when they went away, you know, where did they leave uh, to, or, or where do they live? It's a question. Let's see if it tells us in this book. Let's get started. When the monkeys came back. That's not a monkey though. It's, it's a lizard. There you go. That's a little baby monkey. When Doña Marta was a very little girl, the valley was a peaceful place. Children giggled as they chased each other between rows of tall corn. Fathers whistled as they dug in the gardens. Mothers hummed softly as they wrapped black beans and cornmeal in banana leaves to cook. There was this old road in the valley, but it was an ox cart road an open place for meeting friends or cousins, a nice place for walking, a sunny place for catching lizards. There weren't any cars at all. The valley was quiet, was a quiet place, except for when the monkeys called. Now, when Doña Maria said it's a ox cart road, it means it is a very tiny little well, walkway the cars can't drive on it, and only like animals and people can walk on it. It's almost like as big as a, a sidewalk, but just made out of dirt. That's what an ox cart, our ox cart road is. Every morning and every evening, for as long as anyone could remember, the monkeys announced the changing of night into day. At dawn, they would howl and bark to one another, and the noise they made was like thunder in the trees. At dusk, they would hoot and scream. Each leaf and each blade of grass would tremble from the sound. Tremble means to be like this, kind of shake a little bit. It was so loud. How many monkeys do you see here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten monkeys. One day, a car chugged and sputtered up the old road. After that, more cars came. Not many at first, for the road was an ox cart road, not a car road. Martha was afraid of the cars. The sound and smell made her hide behind her mom's skirt. More and more cars came, and trucks, and more noise. Before long, it wasn't safe to walk down the middle of the road, to stand and talk, to chase the quick lizards. Still, the monkeys shouted from the trees, drowning out all the new noises for a moment each day hooting to one another as they always had, waking up the world in the morning and calling the workers home from the fields at night.
So when it says that the noise from the monkeys was drowning everything out, it means it, when they made noise, it was louder than the cars, louder than the people talking, louder than everything. So their noise was lo was louder than, than everything. It drowned out the, um, the sound that the people made. The rains came and went, and Marta's dress grew too short. And one day, some men from the city came to Martha's house. They offered her father a lot of money, enough to buy six cows and a brand new dress for Martha, and asked to cut down some trees on the side of the mountain. Martha's father agreed, and from that day on, the forest began to disappear. At first it was just a few trees. The lumbermen cut down only the biggest trees, the ones with the hanging vines. The monkeys didn't seem to mind. They just howled and barked and scolded just as before. But five years later, when there was only 24 trees left in the forest, the monkeys went away. Look what I see. Can you see monkeys in the trees? Yeah, I can see one right up there in a tail and a little body. Only a few of them. Marta didn't know where the monkeys went. One night, just as the sun slipped behind the hills, the monkeys shrieked and hooped, hooted and cried louder than ever before. Some said it was because of the full moon. Others said the rainy season was near. But the next morning, the valley was as quiet as a stone. Over the next several years, the last of the trees were cut down. What had once been a forest was now covered with stumps and tangled brush. There were a few birds, but no monkeys. Most people forgot about the monkeys. They had roosters to wake them up in the morning, lamps to work at by night. But Marta, she didn't forget. A lot of birds, a few palms. So when it says the stumps at the bottom of the tree, where the roots are and the little part that comes out of the ground, when they chop it down, that leaves the leftover piece, and that's called a stump. That's all that was left. When she was 15 years old, Marta married Emilio. Emilio worked for Marta's father, and when her father died, he left his farm to Marta and Emilio. You have lots of land now, said Marta one day. I would like to have some of it for myself. Emilio laughed out loud, because in those days, women didn't own any land. Soon we will have a family to feed, said Emilio. After I plant corn and beans and squash, there will be nothing left over to give to you. The rest of the land belongs to the cows. Hmm. What about the land on the side of the mountain? asked Marta. There are too many stumps for a garden, and it's too steep for the cows. That's true, agreed Emilio, and thought it went against custom. To, he gave the land on the other side of the mountain to Marta. What are you going to do with your land? asked Emilio. I'm going to bring back the forest, said Marta, and that is what she did. You see what she's doing? See how the land is not flat like like this? It's like this at an angle. It's steep. Steep means that um, things will fall down it. If you, if you try to, to walk on it, it's hard. It's like the side of a hill or a mountain. Or on the super slides, 
like when you're trying to climb up the slide, that is a steep angle. It's like that. It means things will slide down it. Marta planted trees from the foot of the mountain to as far up as she could climb. When the sun baked the ground in the dry season, she hauled buckets of water to the trees. When the rain, when the hard rain washed the little trees from the soil, she gently replanted them. Look at her trees. They grew a little bit, right? Marta didn't know where the monkeys went. One night, just as the sun slipped behind the hills, the monkeys shrieked and hooted and cried louder than ever before. Some said it was because of the full moon. Others said the rainy season was near. But the next morning, the valley was quiet as a stone. Over the next several years, the last of the trees were cut down. What had once been a forest was now covered with stumps and tangled brush. There were a few birds left, but no monkeys. Most people forgot about the monkeys. They had roosters to wake them up in the morning and lamps to work at by night. But Marta, she didn't forget. So they said the only thing that was left were stumps, and that's the bottom part of the tree. When they cut down a tree, that's the bottom part. All the top part, it's gone. The trunk, the leaves, everything. Just the part that's in the dirt. And it says that the monkey shrieked. What do you think that sound, what that means? Yeah, that's right. A shrieking is like this. <laughs> Making like a loud, high-pitched noise that monkeys make. Not the hoo <laughs> But the high pitch, there's like a scream. Year after year, Marta took care of the trees. In the next 15 years, she gave birth to 11 children. Each child learned to plant and tend trees. Year after year, Marta's children grew tall, and so did the trees. Coffee grows well in the mountain, Emilio, Emilio would tease. Maybe you could plant coffee on your land. But Marta didn't listen. She didn't change her mind, and the forest came back. Look how wonderful. All the kids, Doña Marta, and the trees. Many more years passed. The trees grew higher and higher. Marta's children grew up, and they had children of their own. Emilio died and left the farm to Marta and her sons. One day, old Doña Marta took a walk along the road in the warm sunshine. The children greeted her as she passed. Good morning, tree lady, they said. Good morning, answered Doña Marta with a wink and an old, old smile. She leaned on her stick and stared across the valley. What happened to Marta? That's right, she's getting older. Time has passed. Her trees touched the sky. Thick vines wrapped around their trunks. Birds of every color filled their branches. Now, whenever they dropped their seeds, new trees would grow. The valley was bright with squash and corn and beans, but the sight of the mountains where it was a deep, dark forest green. Doña Marta, her work was finished. One night, Doña Marta couldn't sleep. As she lay in her bed, she listened to the sounds of insects, the twittering of night birds. Out of her little window, she watched the stars trail across the black sky. She watched the moon shadows shift and change in her room. As dawn approached, she heard the roosters begin to crow. And then she heard another sound. At first, it sounded like the barking of dogs. But soon, the barking turned into howling, then howling into shrieks, the shrieks into shouts, and every leaf and every blade of grass trembled with the sound. 
Doña Marta hobbled to the window and leaned out. The dark air thundered with the sound of monkeys, hooting, howling, screaming from the treetops, waking up the whole world once again. Doña Marta closed her eyes, smiled a wrinkled smile, and listened to the music she had missed for 56 long years. So, so when she says she hears the shrieking and the hollering of the monkeys, it means that they're making a racket, a loud noise. That they're not just going, whoo, 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 like monkeys. They're going, ah, 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 very loud. Every morning now, old Doña Marta wakes up to the barking and scolding of the monkeys. Every evening, she waits for them to gather in the trees to shriek and howl and say good night. For a few moments each morning and evening, the sound of monkeys drowns out all the other sounds in the valley. For a few moment, moments each day, it's as if nothing had ever changed. Look at Doña Marta's face. How do you think she feels? Mm-hmm, she's happy. Those are tears of, of happiness. Now, when it says the monkeys were scolding, they're going like, like, ah, ah, making noises like that. Like, yeah, they're scolding people. Scolding the people that are making the noise and each other. Like they're telling, telling each other, stop doing that, stop doing that. The end. There's the back of the book. When the monkeys came back. So friends, let me ask you a question. Before, when we very first started reading the book, I asked you a question. Did you think that the monkeys went somewhere and then they came back? Were you right about that? Do you remember what Doña Marta did that made the monkeys come back? What would you have done if you had, um, if you were there? Think about it. I hope you enjoyed this book. I really liked it. I liked, uh, well, it's got monkeys in it. Who, 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 who doesn't like monkeys, right? Well, hope to see you again soon. For now, bye, friends.